All right, hello, hello. So in this video, we're going to do a little bit uh, of some compositing and with a difficult subject. So uh, I have these two files here. I have bear.psd or bear2 and dune.tiff. And I'm going to open those in Photoshop. So here's the dune image and here's the bear image. So what we're gonna do is put this bear in this different scene, right? He's going to go from a wintry scene to a summer scene. Maybe he's on vacation uh, for the summer. I don't know. So uh, we want to put both of these together first. So I'm going to take my dune.tiff image and off and just drag it off of the tab bar there so I can see both. And then I'm going to go over to the layers panel with my move tool. My move tool is up here and drag it, just drag it into the bear image. And that's one way to do this. There's lots of ways to do it. But that is it. So now I've got um, my dune image on top of the bear, which is not what I want because I want to have the bear on top. So I'm going to click on the dune uh, layer here in the layers panel, drag it down below the bear so that I see the bear instead. So right now we've got our layers in the correct order. We've got our bear on top of the dune. And, but we can't see the dune, right? Because the bear image is solid. So what we want to do is remove this background. So we've kind of gone over, I think, before selections somewhat, but this is a difficult one because we have this bear who does not have a sort of a well-defined edge, right? He's furry. So things like fur and smoke and wispy kinds of clothing are tough to uh, select, to mask, to be able to um, get them out of one image and, and remove the background. So that's what we're doing on this video. So I'm going to grab my uh, quick selection tool to start with. It's the fourth one down there and probably used this one before. And again, how this works is I can, uh, let me zoom in here a little bit. I'm doing command zero to zoom to full screen. Let me get rid of this too. You don't need that. Command zero to full screen. And what happens is I want to use my quick selection tool to select the bear and the tree because that's the tree is going to be in the image too. Um, so I'm going to go around here and the trick again is to not let the little crosshair Oh, no, see I'm on the wrong layer. What's wrong there? Oh, see it's a good lesson. I'm on the background layer of the dune. So that's why it's selecting that. It's not selecting the bear. So let me deselect command D. Learn from your mistakes. That's good, right? I'm going to go to layer 1 now with the bear and now I've, now this should work a little better. So I'm going to grab uh, my quick selection tool again, kind of go through here. I don't want to go, I can let the edge of the, the um, brush go into the background, but not the crosshair. And if we make any mistakes, we'll kind of fix them. So I'm just going to go along the edge here. I can make a larger brush, just like any other brush with my square brackets. Okay, and then I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to go up here and I'm purposely going to make a little mistake here so I can show you how to fix it. Have you seen the mistake yet? Probably, maybe. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm looking at the edge. I'm all around here. That's good. I'm up along the edge of his fur. That's good. It's actually not bad. The quick selection tool did a pretty good job. Uh, so once I get that sort of preliminary selection, that's when I can go up to the top and go to select and mask. So you can get to, and this is fairly new, a couple of versions maybe, fairly recent. So um, if I'm in a selection tool, which means the lasso tool or the marquee or, or the quick selection tool, that will show up there. If I'm not, it doesn't, but you can always get to it under select and select and mask there. So it depends which tool you're in, but if I'm in a selection tool, it's right there, there's a button. If I click on that, then I get this uh, select and mask workspace which is uh, fairly new, as of the time of this video anyway. So now it shows me um, what it looks like with the, the layer masked out. It's not really masked out yet, we're just kind of making the mask. So uh, right away I can see I've got a big issue, right? There's a giant hole in the tree. That was the mistake, did you catch it earlier? I did that one on purpose. Um, so how can I fix that? Well, I've got a bunch of tools over here. Uh, on the top I've got a quick selection tool, so I could use that. I've also got a refine brush, edge brush tool. I'll come back to that one. There's a brush tool, which lets you just paint in selections. So we're gonna use that one in a second. There's also a lasso tool and a hand tool you can move around with, but you can hold down the space bar for that and a zoom tool. So I'm gonna use the brush tool for part of this just to show you how that works. So I'm gonna click on the brush tool, make a bigger um, brush, 
and then just start painting. You see how I start painting and it just gets rid of that hole that I made. Another option would be to go to the lasso tool, which works just like the lasso tool um, in the regular workspace, except this time it's going to automatically add to my selection. So I'm gonna go around this rest of this hole that's left and it's gone. So those are two ways to kind of fix up large mistakes like this. Um, so you got a lot of stuff over here, so let's go over that. You can hit the, uh, you can click on this drop down and see different views. There's onion skin, which is kind of cool. It's, that's fairly new too. You can dial in the transparency of your original background right there with transparency. So now it's gone, now it's all the way there. So you can work with in that mode if you want. It's kind of like an animation. Onion skinning is from an animation technique. Uh, there's marching ants, which gives you the, the marquee like you get in the regular workspace. Uh, there's overlay. Probably faster than me clicking and doing that is hitting F on the keyboard and it cycles through. So you've got overlay on black, on white, black and white, which I kind of like to find big mistakes. And then on layers means you'll just see it as it would be when it's done. So I'm gonna actually go to black and white and see if there's any glaring mistakes because that will show you what the mask actually looks like. So I'm gonna zoom in here, command plus to zoom in. And if I look up here near the tree, it's a little bit sketchy up there. So I'm gonna grab my, um, my brush tool again and go over this little area here. So I'm going to go get my brush and right here where you can, I'm gonna zoom way in so you can see it. You can see this sort of leakage here. This is kind of the back, it's not really selecting the tree all the way because the tree is pretty close to the color of the snow behind it, I think, what's going on. So I'm just brushing right there to clean up that edge a little bit. Over here, it looks like I've got a little bit extra on the outside. You might not be able to say, see it in this video, but if you want to, you can clean that up, hold down option, and you see how the cursor changes to a minus instead of a plus, and then um, I'm going to kind of paint over this area. It had some little white areas in there, that means that there's a little issue with the mask. I'm gonna look around over here. Uh, here's another one. So you might not be able to see this on your monitor. I'm zoomed way in now. There's some little black spots right here, so I'm just gonna paint over them. Because I know that I not shouldn't be seeing through his head right there. And wherever it's white, that's where I'm seeing through that, um, or not seeing through that, that layer. So the rest of it looks pretty good, actually. I'm gonna go Command-0 to zoom all the way back out. Um, that's pretty good. So um, <clears throat> I actually could probably get away with that, but I wanted to show you the rest of these tools. Uh, there's a high quality, there's a show original button here which shows me before I started in this window. Um, or I could hit P and you see all it's doing really is showing me the edge that I fixed over here and this, this problem here that I fixed. So that's what that one does. There's a high quality preview checkbox. Some people will tell you to leave that off until you're kind of getting almost done because it will slow down your computer. Depends on your computer. If you have a faster computer, you could leave that on probably, but that's up to you. This edge detection is how wide is the transition area it's going to look at to try to make a selection. So obviously on this tree, it's a hard edge, right? So I need a narrower um, edge area. On the fur, I need a bigger edge area because the transition is more subtle, right? Because this fur kind of goes into the background. So this is kind of important. So I can click on radius and slide that up. And as, if, as I go up, you can see if I go really far, it's starting to mess up up here a little bit. But I am seeing a little look around his fur. You'll see his fur will kind of extend a little bit. So you kind of have to dial that in. You can also do smart radius. And what smart radius will do is it'll look at the kinds of edges and try to adjust the width of the transition area to make it narrower for stuff like this or wider for stuff like that. Um, and it's been recently improved a little bit. So, um, yeah, just try to play with that a little bit and see if you get some good stuff uh, as far as improving your selection. One other tool that I should show you before we move on is this, um, this Refine Edge Brush. So if you have some problems in an area, you could grab that and let me zoom in here and it's probably not gonna help much in this one, but let's see anyway, maybe right here. So if I go into this area, I think I'm seeing a little bit of the original blue Let's go back to uh, uh, Marching Ants. So yeah, see I'm seeing a little bit of the blue from the snow through into my other version. So, um, so yeah, there you can see it. If I go on, let's see, I'll go to white. Uh, 
there's white. So I'm seeing a little bit of blue through there from the original image, which I don't want to see because I should not be seeing that. So if I go get my refine edge brush tool right here, and this might work a little bit. I'm going to, yeah, there we go. See, I just painted over that area along the edge. And what you're doing when you do that is, is you're painting how wide the transition area was. So the transition area was kind of big from the automatic controls, the edge detection and smart radius. So what I did was I said, oh, that's too wide. I'm going to make it more narrow. And now it's kind of ignoring that blue. So there's before and after. I'm just doing Command Z. Let me zoom in even more. Well, that's pretty far, right? I'm using the hand tool to move around. There's Command Z. See that little change there? That's from refining the edge with this tool. Sometimes you might use that tool more, sometimes less. It actually worked pretty good on that spot. Other spots, it probably won't work very well. If I go up here, maybe up here. Yeah, see now I'm eh, see now I'm getting I'm starting to lose part of the tree again. So I'm gonna undo that. So it depends what where you're working. Um, okay, so I think we're close to done. Let me go back to um, layers here. So now this is kind of what, what it looks like so far. I just wanted to show you these other tools as well. I don't think we're gonna use them really, but I want to show you anyway. Smooth, you can see what that does. Let me zoom in here a little bit. If I use smooth. You see it smooths out, watch his fur over here. It smooths out the edge of the transition. So that doesn't make sense for him because then we kind of lose the fur, which we wanted to get in the first place. Feather is even more pronounced. It, it will subtly change the transition area, or not even subtly. It'll smooth out the transition area even more. And uh, we don't want that either because we're going to lose the fur again. Contrast will make the edge harder. So right now it's kind of soft where his fur is, which is probably appropriate. But if I crank up the contrast, you see it gets hard and doesn't look very good. It looks like it's cut out in 1995 with Microsoft Paint or something like that. So I don't want to use that one, but sometimes it might be good to use. Depends on your image, right? This other one is a possibility. This is called Shift Edge. So if you want to move the edge in or out from where your selection is or your mask is, you can use that. So if I go to the left, you see how the it's coming into the bear. If I go to the right, it's going out of the bear. So sometimes people will go a little bit in to their subject they're trying to extract, and that way they will avoid sort of a halo effect, right? There's the halo, but if I go negative, I kind of cut into the bear a little bit. I'm actually not going to do that because I don't think I need to, but that is a possibility. Uh, the last one, last thing I want to show you down here is decontaminate colors, which actually will probably work on this one a little bit. So if I go to view here, let me go back to command zero. I'm going to go to on black. And if I go to on black for my preview, you can see there's a little halo. So that halo is the snow, I think, in the background of the uh, bear image coming through the edge of his fur, which is, you know, that's what it's going to do. It's bleeding through a little bit. So if that happens, which could happen, right? especially with this kind of image, what you can do is click on this decontaminate colors right down, down here on the bottom right, and it kind of goes away a little bit, um, improves it. It's not completely gone. I could probably go shift edge a little bit in, maybe, eh, I'll just leave it. It's pretty good. It does have a tiny bit of a halo, but it won't show up too much. Uh, but I could go shift edge in a little bit if I wanted to. So once you do decontaminate colors, it says output to, this is your output menu. Um, once you use that, you can't do a selection or a, just a regular layer mask because when you use decontaminate colors, if I turn that off, you'll see all those possibilities are there. Once you do decontaminate colors, you're actually changing the edge pixels. What it's doing is it's looking at the pixels in your bear and kind of putting them into the edge, uh, replacing some pixels. So you can't just use a mask for that because you're changing the pixels. If I turn that off, I could just get a selection or a layer mask out of this. But if I do decontaminate, I can't. So that's the kind of the difference. So I think we are good, I think. So I'm going to click OK. Oh, if you want to change your mind like that was terrible, there's a button down here. It's the reset button down here in the bottom left. I'm going to say OK. And now what happens is, since it, it said a new layer with um, mask, here's my new layer. It copied the, the um, bare layer, and it put in a layer mask for me to hide that, right? So remember, layer masks are great because you can always go in and change them. You can go in and adjust them and fix them. So I could click on this mask if I wanted to, 
and use the regular brush tool, which is right here. And if I painted with white, for example, then I'm painting into the mask and now I can see through uh, or I'm revealing the, this layer again. Wherever this is white, this is going to show up. Wherever it's black, this is not going to show up. So I'm gonna undo that because that was obviously bad. Or if I hit X on my keyboard, so I've got black and white here in my colors. If I paint with white into a black area, it reveals it, undo. If I paint with black, I hit X to get black as my, um, X just switches these colors, it's the same as hitting this button. If I paint with black, here it will erase. So that's why um, layer masks are good because I can always manipulate that transparency. If I would, would have just deleted things, like people have a tendency to do, erase things, then I'm stuck, right? Those pixels are gone, but they, they're not gone in this image, they're just hidden with the mask. I can also work on the mask by itself again if I click on Option or hold down Option or Alt on a PC. Click on the mask in the Layers panel and there's the mask by itself. And if I wanted to clean it up a little bit more, I could. Let's say I wanted to hit, uh, I'm gonna go to white here. See, I've got some more little issues there. I'm just gonna paint with a white brush where I can see there's some mistakes or a black brush on this edge where I can see there's some this should be a hard edge, right? This is a tree, it's not fuzzy or anything. So I'm just using white in this area. I'm hitting X on my keyboard to switch back and forth right there. I'm hitting uh, X to switch back and, back and forth. So that's good, I just hit, all I did was hit, hold down Option or Alt and clicked on that mask to see it by itself. I can hold down Option or Alt again, click on it again, and it comes back. If I want to turn it off temporarily, if I wanted to, I could hold down shift and click on it. And now you can see that uh, it's hidden there. Um, or it's turned off. Yeah, that looks a little strange on that one, but it actually looks okay here. So I think we are pretty good. I may have a some, some couple of issues in there, but uh, I don't want to spend all day on this. You could spend a lot of time on this. Um, one issue is though, as far as compositing goes, if I look at this image, What's going on? The light is coming, which direction is the light coming from? The light is coming from the right, our right, yeah, his left, on the bear, because you can see the shadow of the tree on the bear right there, correct? Where is the light coming from on the background? It's coming from over here, because the shadow is on the right side of these dunes. So that's kind of backwards, right? So remember, in compositing, you want to try to match the angles of the light, if you can. So what I'm gonna do is select this uh, dune layer in the background, and I'm going to go to edit and transform and flip horizontal. And that flipped background layer. So now, if I hide the bear, the light is coming from the right. It's kind of from the rear. I can always move this over here a little bit too. Yeah, it's kind of coming from the right. Um, it's coming from the right and then it's coming from the right on the bear, which makes sense. And actually that works pretty good, kind of frames him nicely like that. So uh, that's it, I think that's better. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video on refining selections for compositing.